streamers, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, as I've stated before, the world can be a dull and thoroughly unlivening place, and we look to our dreams as another means of escape. But in today's subject, the twilight world of the subconscious can be twisted in on itself and turned against the dreamer. Yes, the House of Love opens its doors to Christopher Nolan's reality-bending action thriller, Inception. Released in 2010, Inception is a mind-bending tale of dream thieves who work in corporate espionage, and the seemingly impossible task of implanting information in a dreamer's subconscious. This movie is a genuine Academy Award winner for its cinematography, sound design, and visual effects. Now, I should mention that once again I'm coming into this one without having seen it first. With that said, follow me now, my friends, into a world of dreams where anything can happen, and prepare to receive... Inception! Meet Dominic Cobb, professional dream invader. He's after a document, but in fact it's all a dream. The dream of his co-invader, Arthur. After a kick. Cobb tries to extract the information the old-fashioned way. But that's a dream too. Lucid dreaming. You know, about ten years or so back, I'd heard they were making great strides in Germany in lucid dreaming, and then all of a sudden it went quiet. wonder what happened. Back in the waking world, Cobb phones his children. Okay, so yeah, this is a bit of a long story and kind of a major subplot of the movie. In short, it was a suicide pact of sorts gone wrong. But as I say, it's a major subplot, so I'll explain it further as we go along. For now, let's move on. But Saito, Cobb's previous target, has an interesting idea. Saito proposes Inception, placing an idea into someone's head. And to sweeten the deal, Saito offers to get Cobb off the hook for the fallout from that suicide pact. Well, I've never heard of a businessman being able to call off a murder charge. But first, Cobb needs a new dream architect, which comes in the form of Ariadne. Cobb shares a few helpful hints about dream states over coffee. Quick point. In dreams, the mind works quicker, so time seems to last longer. So five minutes in real time might be an hour in the dream. As we go further into nested dreams, the effect is compounded. But after a spell in Cobb's subconscious, She's less than willing to expose herself to that. Note that the mal projection was the one that stabbed Ariadne awake. This troublesome spectre has been a thorn in Dom's side for quite some time now. Betting that she'll return, Cobb takes an even more dangerous gamble. To acquire a forger. But first he'll have to escape the clutches of his former employers. Which he manages to deceive his current employer. And so we meet the chemist who can create a strong enough, yet safe enough, sedative for a rare, triple-nested dream. And Mr. Saito tells us the reason for this job. Long story short, Fisher Morrow are poised to become a global energy monopoly, which is bad for everyone. Business, eh? It's as bad as politics. Which leads Eames, the forger, to drop in on the Fishers. We begin prepping for the job with a test of the custom dreaming drug. Now, I don't have much of a chemistry background, so I don't know how much of this is actually Hollywood chemistry and how much of this is actually possible. Sorry. And so the job is built. But one night, Ariadne has an attack of curiosity. Cobb tells of the last time he saw his kids. But Ariadne's more interested in the basement. Mr. Fisher Sr., who was an old and sickly man, has died. It's go time. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for energy magnate 
Maurice Fisher. And I wouldn't usually do this kind of thing, but Maurice Fisher is about to get a whole lot more important in the story. Especially seeing as Robert Fisher, son of Maurice and heir to the Empire, is the one that they're planning to incept. And the idea is for him to break up Fisher Morrow into smaller, competing companies. Like I said, business. But Fisher Jr's subconscious isn't without its own defences. And those defences have consequences for Saito. And not just Saito. You see, because of the special formulation of the dreaming drugs, a quick death won't wake you up, but instead drive you to limbo, the lowest level of your subconscious. Ooms puts on a friendlier face and attempts the first inception. Yes, so apparently this is one of Eames' many talents, being a master of disguise in the dream. Meanwhile, Cobb comes clean. You see, Mao, Cobb's wife, left a note with their lawyer, saying that if she died under mysterious circumstances, it was his fault, because he was turning violent or something. Then she leapt to her doom. Now obviously, this letter was a lie, but Cobb still feels guilty, for reasons we'll soon discover. And so we move to Dream 2, and the Mr. Charles Gambit. Now, the Mr. Charles Gambit, as I understand it, is for one of your team to pose as Mr. Charles, head of the subject's subconscious security. This is risky, as it's been explained to me, because it draws attention to the dream state, which means that the projections, which act as subconscious defenders, are looking for the dreamer. Though I may look into it further, it does sound rather useful. And our heroes prepare their mark for Dream 3 with a gambit featuring a mental projection of Fisher VP Peter Browning. But things are getting hairy back up in Dream 1. Things aren't much better in Dream 3, an Eagle's Nest-style mountain installation. And while Fisher reaches his strong room, he's not alone. The malprojection strikes again, shooting Fisher and sending him to limbo. Game over? Not for Ariadne who volunteers with Cobb to brave Limbo and retrieve Fisher, even though in Dream 1 they're already plummeting toward the drink. Luckily, the clock ticks slow in Limbo. And so we reach the Limbo of Cobb's subconscious. Where Cobb confronts his guilt. Okay, so, the meat of the thing. Long story short, too late as we're already on the fourth part, Dom and Mal experimented with Limbo, but they were unaware that time could stretch so very far down there. Hours could turn into years, and in those years, Mal accepted Limbo as her reality. In order to bring her back to reality, Dom incepted her with an idea that reality wasn't real. But when they woke up, the idea stuck. Mal couldn't accept reality as real, and so she created the Suicide Pact the note to the lawyer, leapt to her doom because she thought she was going to wake up, with predictable consequences, suicide pack gone wrong, murder charge, and movie. And now you know the rest of the story. But the malprojection won't go down without a fight, until Ariadne unceremoniously one-shots her, grabs Fisher and dives out the window, back up to Dream 3, where Fisher is successfully incepted and we ride the kicks back up to Dream 1, where the idea sticks. But Cobb stays in limbo a little longer, and rescues an aged Saito from the depths of Cobb's subconscious. And so our movie ends as Dominic Cobb passes through US customs unchallenged, and returns to his family. So then, my friends, that was Inception. Everything we see or seem is but a dream within a dream within a dream. And I'd have to be dreaming not to put this one into the house of love. 
I won't lie, it's an affecting movie. The performances are achingly real, at least from old Sprout-faced DiCaprio and Marion Cotillard as the memory of his lost love. Tom Hardy's Eames is every inch the James Bond archetype, and proof, if proof were needed, that Hardy could pull off the role, were he off. Indeed, he positively steals every scene he's in. The main plot, even with its reality-bending slant, is your basic heist movie, but director Christopher Nolan carries it off with style, charm, and a lot of heart. Though, while the sound design won an Oscar, in my opinion, it wasn't all that special. Except maybe for the apropos use of Non Je Ne Regret Rien in the soundtrack. Overall then, it may not be a sweet dream, but in my opinion at least, Inception is far from a nightmare. I've been Funky Monkey wishing you sweet dreams, good days, and great entertainment. And hey, don't have nightmares!